and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. How many of you guys have been lo married longer than 10 minutes? Raise your hand. <laughs> All right. All right, for those of you that have been married 10 minutes, this is a lesson. But if you've been married longer than 10 minutes, I guarantee you that you can pick out times in your marriage that were probably absolutely some of the toughest times in your marriage. And yet now when you look back, they're some of your best memories. Right? Do you remember when you were first married and you had absolutely no money? And you're saying, what's changed, Paul? We've been married 25 years. But I remember there was a time for Lene and I when we had so little money that at the end of a week on a paycheck, we either had one of two choices. This is true. There was a little burrito shop down the street from our house. We lived in Arvada. And it was about $3.50 for a burrito that was flaming fire hot. And the choice was either we could go rent a movie for the evening or we could go to that burrito shop and buy a burrito, cut it in half, she would eat half and I would eat half, and we would make fun of each other <laughs> trying to eat the burrito because it was so hot. And so our entertainment became each other because we had no money. And at the same time, we look back at those times, and those were great times. Because difficult times don't have to be hard times. Difficult times times are only difficult times when you lose your perspective because when you know who's in control of your situation you know it's going to be okay I mean you know that Peter when he's out there and, and the boat's going crazy and the storm's going crazy and everybody's freaking out and Peter looks up and he sets his eyes upon Jesus because he knows everything's going to be okay and he doesn't just set his eyes on him and say, hey, Jesus, come over here with me. Come on, come, come jump in the boat. We know that you're the master salesman. He says, let me come to you, Jesus. Let me get out of the boat. Let me take a chance. Let me trust you, Jesus. You see, every difficult circumstance is an opportunity to trust God. Isaiah 40, one of my favorite. But those who wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. You see, the third thing I want you to write down is this. You see, way too many people deal with depression during the holidays by allowing the enemy to rob you of your joy, by concentrating on what you don't have. Nehemiah 8.10, he says, don't be dejected or sad. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. You see, here's what's going to happen. As you go through the holidays, the enemy is going to come along and he's going to begin to remind you of all the things you don't have. And if he doesn't do a good job of it, Target will. <laughs> and if Target doesn't do a good job of it, then Walmart will, or Mervyn's will, or your neighbor will, because he'll put up more lights than you. Somebody's going to come along during the holiday season and remind you of what you don't have. You see, here's what you do. When the enemy reminds you of what you don't have, as Christians, we have one job. And that is to stand and remind the enemy of what we do have. Right? It's to stand and remind the enemy of what we do have. You have eternal life. On December 25th, you have eternal life. On November 25th and 26th, you have eternal life. You have a comforter that no matter what you go through over the next 30 days, that he will never leave you or forsake you. That even if you're alone, even if, if during this holiday season you are found yourself single or you found yourself in a circumstance where you are alone this year, physically, you are not alone spiritually. Because you have a comforter. You have a provider that no matter how much money runs out at the end of the week, that God's going to take care of you because he promises to. He's your provider. He offers you hope. He offers you peace. He offers you love and joy. And in the church, we offer you family and we offer you friendship. And that no matter what happens, you can know that there's a church that loves you and cares about you. 
Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah 8.10. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. As a church, guys, let us not lose sight of that. That this should be a time where man, we hold our heads up high. It's easier to go through the wall, the lines at Kmart when you know the joy of the Lord is your strength. Just repeat that to yourself. You see, when you remember and take time for what God has given you, it changes what the enemy has taken from you. That when you have the ability and you take the time to remember what God has given you and done for you, it changes what the enemy has taken from you, right? Have you ever done that? I mean, like the enemy's robbed you and ripped you off, and everybody has those areas of life. And then when you begin to sit there and you think about that, and boy, that brings up a lot of anger, right? When you think about those areas that the enemy has ripped you off, there's ways and, and there's things that he speaks to you, and all of a sudden you can feel that anger stuff building up. But if you want to reverse that flow, start thinking about what God's done for you. Oh, yeah, the enemy ripped me off here. But you know what God's done for me? He's put my family back together. You know what God's done for me? I used to struggle with this, and I don't struggle with that anymore. Boy, I used to have this terrible relationship with my, my parents, and I've watched God rebuild that over the years, and you just start laying things out that God's done for you, and pretty soon it changes what the enemy's taken from you. Proverbs 15, 13 says, A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. Choose a happy heart. Proverbs 17, 22 says, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but broken spirit saps a person's strength. Choose good medicine. Choose a happy heart. Choose to remind yourself of what God's done for you and in you and through you. Choose during these Christmas holidays not to let the enemy get the best of you, but stand upon the word of God. You see, as, as we get to point number four, what I want you to write down is we move closer to the end of this service. This is what I want you to examine. Just as I asked you to examine where your joy levels are in point number one, I'd like for you to examine where's your heart in point number four. Because you know what? The condition of your heart is determined by the joy in your heart. And the joy in your heart is a determination on how much you've allowed God into your heart. You see, for so many t people, they get to the Christmas holiday season and they shut their heart down. They shut their heart down and they say, you know what, I'm not going there. This stuff's too hard, this stuff's too painful. Yeah, I can always tell the condition of my heart by the joy in my heart. For me, I can always tell when my life goes south a little bit because I'm, I'm a worshiper. How many of you guys are worshipers? You like to sing worship songs. Then maybe even you sing out loud and that annoys people and that causes other people heart problems. <laughs> right? But I can always tell I'll wake up to worship just in my head or, or just I'm, I'm humming or I'm singing or whatever and it's just there. And I can tell when it's not there, I've got issues. I've got spiritual issues. That those are the times where I go, what, where did that go? I can tell when my heart's gone south by how much I laugh because I'm a laugher. If you and I ever go to a movie, you probably want to set four or five seats from me at least because I'll get something on you. I'll be laughing so hard. <laughs> or smiling. That I, I've gone through periods of time, literally, I, I can think of about a year ago, that there was a period of time where I'm driving down the road and I could just feel my face all kind of tense. Have you ever done that? And just feel it. There's just kind of this tenseness on your chest and in your face. And I looked out in the mirror and I realized, man, I haven't smiled in a long time. What's going on? And I just started practicing smiling. That whether I was feeling it or not, I was going to smile because I was like, you know what, God? You've done good things in my life. And I'm going to be thankful for them even if I have to fake it. <laughs> and you shouldn't have to fake it. But you do need to remind yourself of the goodness of God during the holiday season. You see, the joy in your heart determines the condition of your heart. How's your heart? How are you doing tonight? Oh, we don't really want to talk about that. That's getting a little too tender. How's your spiritual life? How, how's your mental life? I mean, you can really tell when your life goes south by what you're thinking about, 
by the things on your, that, that are going through your mind. Because when your life goes south, for some of you guys, you begin to go back to, to images and thoughts that shouldn't even be in your head. For some of you, you go back to old wounds. And, and that when your life goes south, what you start thinking about is the, the, the things, the people that hurt you. And you start spinning your wheels there. How are you doing physically? How are you doing emotionally? You see, as Christians, we have too much to celebrate to let the enemy rob us of all the good things that God has done for us. I love Galatians 5.22. Galatians 5.22 just says this. But when the Holy Spirit controls your life, but when the Holy Spirit controls your life, He will produce this kind of fruit. He'll produce love, joy, peace, patience, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You see, this is, this is the side that you look at and you go, who am I letting control my life? Because if these characteristics do not appear in my life, then somewhere along the way, I've lost track of the good things that God has done for me. If I do not feel the love of Christ or the joy of the Lord, or the peace and the patience and the kindness, the goodness and the faithfulness. If I am not exhibiting self-control, then somewhere along the way, I've lost my perspective and my direction. Because if your life is not producing the gifts of the Spirit, you've given the enemy way too much control of your life. You see, here's the last thing I want you to write down. During the next 30 days, I want you to make it a goal. I want you to make it a goal to take time to celebrate what God has done in your life. We promise to do that for me? That this is your homework. This is your homework assignment for the next 30 days. That, that you and I are going to stop at points in our day every day to thank God and to celebrate what God has done in our life. I love this in Nehemiah 8.12. It says, So the people went away to eat and drink at a festival meal to share gifts of food and to celebrate with great joy because they had heard God's word and understood them. You see, here's what happened. They came into the church and they came in all kind of bummed out, all kind of sad. And Nehemiah said, "What, what, What? Guys, we serve the Lord God. Let's celebrate. Let's take time to celebrate what God's done for us. So the people took time to celebrate the goodness of God and the people took time to give thanks for all that God had had done and the people took time to remember and laugh and to enjoy life. Don't ever lose sight of what God has done for you. For you and in you and what He wants to do through you. There's a psalm in 51.2 and if you want to write this psalm down, I think it's going to be a, a key to helping you remember what God's done for you over the next 30 days. And it just says this, Lord, restore to me the joy of my salvation. That Lord God, would you remind us of what you did for us in salvation. We're going to close service a little bit different tonight. Tim came to me earlier this morning and he said, hey Paul, Over the weekend, I wrote a song. And I'd like to play the song. And he pulled out his guitar. He said, you want to hear it? It's not like you can say no. (laughs) I said, I'd love to hear it. And he played the most amazing song that I've heard in a long time. And I just went, you you, you did that over the weekend? He said, yeah, that's just something God gave me. And I don't believe he just gave it to Tim. I believe that he gave it to us as a church. And so that during this next song, I want you to just continue to meditate on Psalms 51 too. That says, restore to me the joy of my salvation. And that tonight would be that we would leave here with a renewed hope of who God is in our life and what he's done in our life and give him thanks for that. Amen.
sin and sorrows grow. Oh, how thorns infest the ground. Oh, how nations bend their bows. Oh, how sickness knocks us down. He's come to make his blessings full. Far as the curse is found, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Joy to the world, the victory is won. Let every heart him room. Let heaven and nature say joy to the world. Joy. Creation grows and awaits for healings to Deserts spring to life, and warriors sow in peace. Life and light to all He brings. Let earth receive her King. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Joy. children. 